All right, it's time to do an unboxing of my new Akuma Big Fish spinning reels. What I have here are a couple of Akuma Selena spinning reels. These are the SA6000HA. They did not come in a box, so I've already got them partially unboxed. Now these are very nice looking reels here. Now I gotta take this plastic clip off so I can tighten it. <laughs> Whoa, there it goes. They put it on there to protect the handle. Uh, whoops, wrong way. Check and make sure everything works on it. You know, you're supposed to reel it that way, right? <laughs> no, you're supposed to reel it using gravity to assist you. Very, very nice. They made these lightweight in comparison to the other saltwater reels. Let me see if it says what it is on here. 5, 8 to 1 gear ratio. This can hold 270 yards of 50 pound braid and it has 33 pounds of drag. It does have other cool features. Akuma always adds cool technology to their reels. And it has a giant knob of a handle. I've seen people catching some pretty big saltwater fish with these reels. And I got the 6,000 size, which is kind of a smaller reel. So I can either throw live bait or poppers with it. Get this one open. Cool. They do have Yep, both of them have these line covers. So when you have a line on here, you put this band over the line to help keep it good. Which I'm going to show you how I'm going to put line on these. Properly, or at least semi-properly. The best way would be to take the spool off, take it somewhere and have it put on with a machine. But I'm not going to do that. And I know I did a video a while back on how to not, <laughs> you know, spool a spinning reel. Well, thankfully, braid, which is what I'm going to put on these, is more forgiving than monofilament when it comes to, like, twisting. Get this plastic clip off. There we go. That one didn't go flying. Yeah, very, very nice. Now, what am I going to put these reels on? Let me get the rods. When I'm putting it on, the Akuma Silver Slayer rod. I didn't realize how lightweight these rods are. I ended up buying a different like spinning reel for it and that spinning reel was super heavy it was also like waterproof and um you know really good for these rods but i'm going to save those for another time and put these lightweight reels on a lightweight tarpon rod i mean this is built to catch tarpon and this is the extra heavy seven foot nine inches Power extra heavy, action medium fast. <laughs> so I think these reels will fit with this perfectly. Let me let me see here. Let's put it on here and tighten it down. And you guys can tell me what you think. There we go. 
I mean, it's not that bad. Where is the balance here? Right on the foregrip. Yep, I keep hitting my boat, but it's balancing on my finger right on the foregrip. I mean, that's perfect. At least I think it's perfect. The reel might look a little small for this, but it is in line with the eyes. I think this will work out pretty good. I am going to target tarpon someday with this rod and reel combo, but I think what I am going to target here locally are striped bass. This is going to be perfect for live bait with striped bass, like throwing gizzard shad. I could probably throw skipjacks with this. Whoa. The rating is a quarter ounce to three ounces. So it is kind of a lighter rating. But I I'm sure be capable of, you know, some smaller skipjacks, some smaller gizzards, bigger gizzards. Probably not, you know, plate size gizzard shad or three pound, you know, skipjacks. But this will work, should work pretty good. At least that's the idea of it. If I like it enough, I'll get more of these combos just so I can, you know, target striped bass. I've got a few other things in works so I can actually target striped bass. As a fishing guide, there's a lot of people that want to target striped bass. Uh, there's a lot more people wanting to target striped bass than they want to target catfish. And I need to adapt, at least on that side, you know, to catching more striped bass. And I think this will work pretty, pretty good. Now, I don't like using braid as a fishing guide because I'm afraid someday one of my less experienced clients might wrap their finger around the braid and lose a finger. That's what I'm afraid of the most. But in this case, braid will work better because we're casting live baits. Spinning reels, braid, they're the best for casting live baits, at least in my opinion. And I know I've said in the past, a cheap bait caster is just about as good as an expensive spinning reel. These are expensive spinning reels, so hopefully they will last against bigger fish. Knowing Akuma, it probably will, especially knowing that they're cheaper, you know, spinning reels. I've seen them used with alligator gar or for chasing alligator gar, the Akuma Avenger. If an Akuma Avenger can survive a few alligator gar, I'm quite sure these will survive some striper runs or tarpon in the future. Now the braid I'm using is something I got on sale and it's the spider wire Dura braid. I figured I'd give it a test. It's yellow, so it's a little bit higher visibility, so you can see what's going on. 50 pound braid. And each of these packets is 300 yards, which is a good thing because, like I said earlier, this holds 270 yards of 50 pound braid. So this entire thing can almost go on here. It's, it's a perfect match. If I had gotten the bigger reel, it would hold more than 300 yards, so I wouldn't be able to use what I would normally buy at like Academy Sports or at one of my local, you know, fish shops like Edgemore Outdoors or Big Fish Outfitters. Now I am going to put a monofilament backing on here just because I don't want the braid to spin on, you know, the, uh, the spool. Now it does feel like it's you know, grooved, so you could just put braid directly on it, but I, I'm not gonna take a chance. Even if, you know, a reel has, uh, you know, a rubber ring on it, I'm not gonna take that chance. I'm always gonna put a monofilament backing on it. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna put it through the first, or the bottom eye. Then you tie a knot in the end of this, You gotta cut off the tag end. And then I'm gonna make a big loop 
and then tie an overhand knot on the main line over the loop and then take that loop make sure your bail is open on the spinning reel and just pull and then pull till you get to the knot and now I have it attached to my spool Uh, I'm going to have to tighten down the drag. Because this is a backing, I really don't care about twisting or anything. If I ever make it to this backing, it's going to break. And then just, oh, nice, a big old knot. <laughs> you can tell I don't take care of this line. Well, I guess that's going to be enough right there because uh, I made a knot. But that, that's enough. I mean, I just needed to barely cover the bottom. And then I'm going to tie the braid to where this knot's at. Now, what I'm going to do here is a double uni knot between the backing line and the braid. And as you can tell, I'm just kind of doing an overview. I'm not showing you like a close-up of the knots. These are pretty standard knots, and there's other videos that will show it. I'm just doing an overview of what I'm doing with this. I know there's a couple of videos out there that do show double unis, but they never, like, wet the line. you got to wet the line when you're working with a double uni. And that's only if you want to have a chance to, uh, you know, reel in the fish if you make it all the way down here which with this 15 pound monofilament as the backing, I don't know, you know if it's gonna work or not. Now let's spool it on. I gotta grab something. Got me a wet chop towel and a very long screwdriver. I'm gonna sacrifice, at least I think I can sacrifice one of these Akuma boxes a rod holder or a spool holder the wet towel is to help create you know, a little bit of tension on the line when I'm reeling it onto the reel. And this is just to let the line out. Nothing too special about this. I may reel it upside down too. <laughs> just because it's easier to deal with whenever I'm putting line on here. Now that I've taken all the line back off of it. So basically, just wrap it right here, close to the eye, and start reeling. And now I got it all over everywhere. Little drawback of uh, doing it this way is the line going absolutely everywhere. There we go. Put the foam in there to slow it down a little bit. <laughs> more complex than I thought it would be. Okay, maybe I'll do it the proper way here. Okay. That looks pretty good. Probably not 270 yards, but it's quite a bit of line on this reel. Let's see what the spool looks like. 
quite sure there's better ways to do this. A little bit left on the spool. Can't really tell how much. Uh, it doesn't look like too much left. And there you go. That yellow line makes it look pretty good. It matches the yellow handle almost. Very nice. What do you guys think? Is this going to work out the way I'm envisioning it? Or is it going to be a complete failure? Leave a comment below. Now I'm going to uh, fill this one up. I've got a second rod for this one. And uh, yeah. Maybe I'll put a little bit more monofilament backing on it than I did on this one. Maybe just a little bit more. I, th I personally think that these are going to work out pretty good. They're very, very, very nice reels. Anyway, as always, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to watch this, uh, this unboxing setup video of my new spinning reels. I really do appreciate every single one of you that watch my videos. Now all I need to do is get these on the actual water and try to catch something with them. At best, wish me luck. At worst, subscribe to my channel and see what happens in the future. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you again next time.